The president doubles down, under fire for his efforts to get Ukraine to investigate Joe and Hunter Biden. President Trump makes an out in the open request to China. Michigan Congressman Paul Mitchell is here to talk about it. And why is it so hard to get a look at official documents in Michigan? We'll look at whether the state's FOIA laws need changing. Today is Sunday, October 6, 2019, and this is Flashpoint. Hi, welcome to Flashpoint. Really glad you're with us this Sunday morning. And this Sunday morning, the scene in Washington is either reaching an impeachment boiling point or it's really nothing at all to worry about, all depending on your point of view. It's an extraordinary time and it, it kind of reminds me of this dress. Remember this? Is the dress white and gold or is it black and blue? Millions looked at it and saw it very differently. And isn't that pretty much where we are in politics in 2019? What color is the dress to you? It may have something to do with the news sources you frequent. We've become as divided in our media as we have in our politics. In fact, coming up a little later, we're going to talk about a terribly important journalism issue, the issue of FOIA, or Freedom of Information Act. Michigan generally ranks at the bottom when it comes to government transparency rankings. We'll talk about why and what can be done about it. But up first, Republican Congressman Paul Mitchell. He's so frustrated by the current climate that he's leaving after his current term. We know that. But before he does, it appears he's going to be asked to vote on impeachment. What color is the dress to him? He's up first this morning on Flashpoint. For so long, we heard the president say over and over again, no collusion, no collusion, no collusion. It's been his oft-repeated synopsis of the Mueller report, and yet now he seems to be saying, yes, I am colluding, and it is my absolute right. Let's talk about it with Republican Paul Mitchell of Michigan's 10th District back with us on Flashpoint. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this Good morning. Good to be here, um, I don't know if anything has happened this week that has changed your thinking on, on what we've seen, but we've come a long way from the president telling us that he wouldn't collude with a foreign government uh, to now telling us not only that he's been trying to do that with Ukraine, but he's urging China to help out. Well, I, I think you've got it kind of opposing narratives going on here, let's be honest about it. Sure. We've got one narrative, we're trying to root out corruption, and another narrative saying, yeah, you're trying to use it as a political tool. Uh, I think we need to get all of the information, all the, like the narrative from yesterday, the transcript from yesterday from Volcker's appearance, mm -hmm. or yes, the other day, uh, as well as anything, that, there's testimony going on today in, in, uh, in Congress to find out what people are saying transpired through that situation in the Ukraine. Do we really think there's much cover to say this was about corruption? I mean, uh, that would be refreshing for the president to be concerned about corruption, the way, given the way that he talks about Kim Jong-un, who by definition is one of the most <laughs> corrupt creatures on the planet. Well, China's a big issue too right now, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, China, sure. who we, we don't trust them with, whether it's the value of their currency or, or uh, intellectual property, and all of a sudden we want to trust their ability to investigate something? Well, I think... We have to recognize that impeachment is not a political tool. It is, it is a pretty serious act. Mm -hmm. Four times in this nation's history, we have gone to that tool. Yep. It's not something that we should do based on assumptions of what someone did or didn't do. We need information. We need all the information. There's been ongoing investigations now for three years. So at some point in time, I, I've said to some friends of mine in the Democratic Party, you also have a credibility crisis here because how many times can you say this is impeachable, this is impeachable, and, and you look at it like the Mueller report and say, no, it's not. Uh, so the question is, let's get all the information. Let's get all the information about this conversation that transpired a series with Ukraine and, and see if there's a there there. Right now, uh, he hasn't done anything that's impeachable. The question is, is it underlying there a problem? It isn't part of the president's problem, though, the way that the story always shifts. I always thought what gave the Russian investigation so much life was all the lying at the beginning of it over who met with Russia, when, uh, how many people, what they talked about. It was about adoption for a while, all these crazy things, which gets people who are in the investigative world up on their haunches. And that's kind of what we've watched happen this week. The president said that this was all hearsay, that the transcript, that the, the that the whistleblower's report didn't match the transcript. Now he's basically saying, yes, this is all what happened, but it's fine. I mean, isn't that the problem that the story when it shifts that way? Well, I think the question remains is, was there a clear, what they say, quid pro quo, or expectation, if you do this, investigate, we'll help you in a variety of Does other Does that ways. have to be there for this to bother you? Uh, it, 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 it would be okay if there wasn't a string attached, if he said, I want you to investigate Joe Biden? That's not, that's not my role in Congress. I have to focus on that. My role in Congress is, is it a high crime or misdemeanor? 
are there high which crimes is, and misdemeanors? Well, that's which the is criteria. up to you to decide what the definition uh, of there's it is. There's a whole I bunch guess, of right? us. Uh, there's going to be 435 in the House to make that decision. <laughs> 435 definitions. Uh, and there will be 435. Now, some have already made that decision long ago. I yeah. mean, there are some that made the decision. Uh, some of the Michigan delegation made the decision a long time ago. Uh, some of us, obviously, at this point had not had decided that what, there wasn't that. Uh, we have to make that, but I think we have to do that with the American people recognizing why we've done it and not just do it as a political hack job. Uh, impeachment's not some political weapon. It is something that is a safety valve for the American people when you've got someone in office that is clearly acting in a manner that is well beyond what they would, would accept. Uh, and, and that's the question we have to uh, ferret out. Or we, apparently we do now because it's well, we're well on that path now. I believe that the Democrats are, are I saw an article that was written, uh, I think Nolan Finley did it, that the uh, impeachment's on autopilot, mm -hmm. just a matter of when. Uh, I think he's probably right. Um, it, it's interesting watching the Michigan delegation. We had Justice, Justin Amash, who has become an independent, left the party. We've also got Fred Up, Upton now saying that he thinks that the impeachment inquiry or looking into these matters is at least appropriate. But I'm curious as to whether you see much shift among other Republicans or is everybody still uh, very much locked into support of the president? I don't know if it's a matter of locked in. It's a matter, I think, of... Uh waiting to get information. I think uh, most of the delegation, at least my colleagues on the Republican side, say the same thing, which is, okay, if we're going to do this, then let's get all the information. Uh, making decisions based on dribs and drabs, what's released and leaked and not leaked, is a terrible way to, to make decisions that are this, uh, mount, this, this important. This is historical stuff we're talking about here. The president, of course, memorably said he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and, and he'd that. be fine. And I think a lot of people see the way that you, you have been an exception and that you have been occasionally willing to call out the president for things. Some would say that's because you're not running for re-election. Well, I did that before that long ago. But, but, but <clears throat> the president uh, it can, can do absolutely no wrong to a lot of his supporters. And that's, that's interesting to me because I don't know that we've ever had a president who could never do any wrong. I can't speak for others. I, long before I made a decision about running or not, it was actually in the first term, in my first term, I made a comment about the Charlottesville situation. Right, right. Uh, I, On know, this I, program, as I I, as I, I think it probably was. Yes. Uh, I think that um, I simply pick and choose my points where I think something's particularly egregious rather than see if I can find something to criticize because any given day we could do that on both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, Kevin McCarthy, the, the leader of the Republicans, sent a letter to Nancy Pelosi about, okay, if we're going to do an impeachment process, then let's have a process that really provides both sides' ability to defend themselves, to move forward, uh, based on historical precedent. And she basically sent back a letter that effectively said, go pound sand. Uh, the American people need to see that we're handling this in a, in a responsible manner. And right now, uh, let's be honest, we're really not, and that's troubling to me. Should political calculations enter into this, though? I mean, something, if somebody should be removed, it, it, it's troubling, I think, to many, to those who are we're watching people make decisions about impeachment as to how it regards their, how it, it will reflect and uh, improve or discourage their own political chances, what it means for the president's well, chances to stay in office. The president seems to say impeachment would be good for him. Those, I mean, either somebody should be out of office or not. Uh, but that that's right? part of the. That's part of the. You talked. We and I talked last time. It's part of the overwhelming problem in Washington. <laughs> is uh, is step on. one is what's yeah. the political calculation. Step two is, uh, you know, what are, what are the talking points. Uh, step three is how do I raise money. Uh, so the reality is, no, it should not be. Uh, I've had conversations with a variety of people uh, on this topic, and, and I believe we simply have to decide what the right thing to do is. What we define, each individual, there's 435 members. What is a high crime and misdemeanor? What is beneath the presidency that, in fact, someone doesn't deserve to be in there? That's the criteria, not whether or not it's politically advantageous. Well, one of the things that has uh, shocked me a little bit is that more of the president's supporters weren't willing to call him out for trashing the whistleblower and describing the whistleblower as a traitor and saying, we used to deal with these kind of people in a different way. Way. This is exactly why whistleblower laws were written, weren't right. they? To protect people well, to, you, who, who you saw feel my like they need to come forward. You saw my commentary on it, right? Uh, Senator Grassley and some, a couple others came out and said, no, it's exactly why whistleblower laws were put in place. And I believe we need to protect the whistleblower, whether you like what the whistleblower said or not, whether ultimately it deter it's determined to be that they were <clears throat> playing political games or not. Without those laws, we have a difficult time protecting our nation, protecting, defending our Constitution. Uh, people have to have the ability to speak up and then you make a determination whether they're playing games or not. Otherwise, 
well, a bunch of timid bureaucrats, and that's simply not helpful to our nation. Lastly, have you got a guess where you think all this is headed? We'll, we'll, ha we'll have an impeachment vote. Oh, I, I think it's. I think there's. I don't think there's any way that uh, Nancy Pelosi can avoid an impeachment vote. I think we'll have one on the floor of the House. If I were betting, there will probably be a vote between before the uh, Christmas holidays, and she'll dump it over in the Senate to entertain uh, McConnell and company over there. Well, I think that's what will happen. The question is, let's do the responsible thing on this. Let's make sure the members, as well as the American people, have all the information because they, they need to see us operate with the best interests of this country at our heart yeah. and not political uh, opportunism. Congressman Mitchell, it's always good to have you on the program. Thanks it's good for to see you. being here. You too. We'll continue with uh, more on this. This is Flashpoint on Local 4. Back with more in just a minute.